Hey guys, Mark Matthews, 42freeway.com. Got an update for you on the Direct Connection project in Belmar, New Jersey, specifically the wall collapse. So you know no one's covering this project to the detail that I am, so it's gotta be good when I'm doing a YouTube video, right? Well, how about this? TV show Engineering Catastrophes has done a segment on the Belmar road collapse. It's actually already airing. It started airing yesterday. Second level, they needed experts to talk about it. I'm one of those experts. Now, I, I, I'm on camera. I don't talk about the engineering aspects, but you're going to be... They did a good job representing me, I think. Um, the reason why I'm doing this video, though, is we filmed this thing like eight months ago, and I kept it secret all this time. At the time, the state had not released the report to tell folks why the wall actually had collapsed. There's a lot of great information there. So they have some experts talking about it in the video, what they think, but you don't have that final closure. So that's what I want to do in this video, and there's a couple other aspects I'm going to add in. I have this thought like some guy out in Tulsa, Oklahoma is watching this on, on cable at, at his house and wants to, you know, he Googles more for more information and maybe he finds this video. If you want to watch it, so they do four segments in the episode. So it ha the title is Memphis Bridge of Doom. It's season six, episode four. We're actually at the fourth one. Now, don't be dismayed. When you turn it on, they're going to rattle off like three other projects. They don't even mention Belmar in the beginning, like the, the, the agenda, um, but it's there. And, and again, for all those same reasons, I think we're sort of pushed back in this case because you know, when you watch one of these episodes, you want to see, you know, what the issue was. You want to hear the experts. You want to know, you know, what, why it happened and what their final resolution is. And we don't, they didn't have all those pictures eight months ago. I'm hoping to fill the gaps in. I'm going to take a step back and just kind of cover a little bit of the general aspects of the project. Just thinking that maybe one guy who doesn't live in South Jersey is going to see this. Stick with me, guys. Um, for many of you in South Jersey, you already know this information. Here's a quick agenda, not in order. Again, we're going to talk about the, the reasons we got from the state and the engineers why this collapsed, what we know now, what the ideas are for the future rebuild, um, why they're even doing this thing. Take a step back, right? Other aspects for why they're doing it that, that aren't talked about in the engineering catastrophe show. Um, just my general experience in filming. And uh, by the way, I don't know any of the participants. I never met any of them. We, this was a one-on-one -on -one filming thing with me and a gentleman in my car. So the opinions you see on the engineering catastrophes episode, particular to the Belmar, are not my opinions. So other than if I came out of my mouth. Um, and then we'll do a quick intro. 42 Freeways, my site, commercial news, South Jersey. I'm not just roads. New businesses, new wing stops, and all the warehouses. Um, filming was done in the car. They wanted the shot with the, the, the collapsed wall behind me, but the way the project's developed, there just isn't that angle. We drove around for two hours. They used about five of my clips. Um, guys, you made me look good. I was worried in all my tangents, you'd grab the wrong things. You picked the best things. I actually sound intelligent. Uh, you did an amazing job editing and putting this together. It's very entertaining to watch. And, uh, you know, this is not a knock on you guys because you did absolutely the best you could have done with the information that was known at that time. Um, to take a step back for those watching this at a national level, this is New Jersey. I'm going to tell you where this project is. Philadelphia is this big conglomeration of white, uh, that's lights, I guess. New York's to the north, Del uh, Delaware, Baltimore, Washington to the, to the south. We got Atlantic City here and the Jersey Shore, which is a big, huge vacation spot. Summertime, the traffic going down the shore is ridiculous. And then Cape May, also another area there. So there are two roads, north and south, through uh, New Jersey, if you weren't aware. The New Jersey Turnpike, one of the most tra heavily, heavily traveled roads in the, in the country, and 295, where this project is. Um, going across, you have the 42 into Atlantic City Expressway. You also have Cape May, which uh, is the Route 55 and Route 47. Right in the middle here, that's where Belmar is. So y this is where all these roads come together. This is where 60 years ago the state tried to put some things together in the federal government, and now why they're spending over a billion dollars to try to fix it. I mentioned in the video it would have been great if they could have just went straight through. You know, this was built in the 40s or the 50s. Belmar was already being developed. There was already a large cemetery. Belmar Park was already there. They would have wanted to go through here. There was a lot of reasons why they couldn't. They had to do some crazy things. Um, in the video with engineering catastrophes, I talk about just, I call it the bowl here, but uh, how all the roads just seem to come together, you know, below grade, below the residential grade. And it makes it very difficult to like find your lane to get to the next place. I'm going to add, this is very important, um, Aljo's Curve. This is the federal highway, guys, coming south from New York. You get to the Philadelphia area, but still in New Jersey. This bend, this purple line, is how people have been driving for 50, 60 years. It has to go down to 35 miles an hour. You know, years ago before GPSs, trucks didn't seem to know as much that there was a bend there. And they'd hit this at 60 miles an hour, wipe out at the turn, and shut the road down for hours, you know, as the, as the truck tipped over. The new plan is this much straighter, still curved, 
but straighter yellow line. They're actually going to go up pretty much over the town to make this happen. Federal government wants their roads fast and straight. They don't want those wicked bends. Another thing is there's a second project called Missing Moves. Just call it out that even after spending almost a billion dollars, they don't handle all the movements from, like, say, Atlantic City to 295 South. There's a separate project happening at the same exact time, 180 million missing moves. Uh, Wall 22 is where this thing collapsed. Here's a shot right after the collapse. You can see this berm. It's literally the soil underneath the berm pushed out as the wall collapsed in. Um, here's another shot, Department of Transportation shot. A bunch of these shots are from Mike Crucci Photography of South Jersey, some of the original ones. This right here is from the Department of Transportation. Um, again, pushing down and, you know, but literally the berm pushed out and the wall collapsed down. Um, this is a shot from prior. Uh, <clears throat> there was a report done months after we did the filming um, that gave details. Credit to New Jersey Department of Transportation for the transparency on this and the Hardesty and Hanover Engineering. You guys did an amazing job. Key items were sand was used for the slope. Underneath that slope, the berm, and underneath the roadway, all sand. Um, underground concrete columns. There is an LTM and a concrete column structure underneath everything to carry the load down. It was found to be insufficient. What I don't bullet here is there is no columns that, like, say, from the top heavy part of the structure in the wall that goes all the way down to the bedrock. I should have called that out as a bullet. Um, there definitely was high groundwater conditions all the time in that area. Plus, we had many days of rain. So you factor in the, you know, the stress and pressure of the weight of the, of the rain, um, the sandy, sandiness in the middle there. Well, let's talk about it. Two weeks before this even happened, there was signs of, of the collapse. Soon after, they got in there with the tractors and sort of cleaned it out. One, to make it more secure. Two, for evidence collecting. They wanted to get in there and, and see underneath why this thing failed. Um, this is directly from the report of Harness, Hardesty and Hanover. Look at this, guys. This yellow colored area here in the middle was the berm, sand. This is the heavy wall above it. This is the heavy roadway and the, the, the backfill of the roadway and the roadway. There are no columns between the top portion and the lower bedrock, except for one column in the back. What they did is they put sand here and then they built this LTM load transfer mat system and then had these columns here. Um, here's the LTM, sort of it's just like a broader area. I, I don't even think it's like a solid, completely solid structure. And then it captures the load from, a head, from above and carries it down to the column. We're gonna talk about the columns. There's a deficiency there too. Early on, even before, look, they're still building the wall, right? This is years ago. Water was seen coming through this. So the expert on the, the actual engineering catastrophes video talks about the water problems. That is, that is absolutely correct. Um, you can see here in regards to the berm and the swale, this is where it was before the wall, and this is the wall as it collapses. Everything sort of fell in. You know, I guess a, a good analogy here is you took a cream-filled donut, top and bottom, and you squeezed it with pressure, it's gonna push out the side, right? The cream's gonna come out the side. Basically, you have the sand in the middle, you get pressure in the top, pressure in the bottom. The columns weren't on the underneath, weren't able to hold the, the uh, horizontal stress, and it literally pushed everything out like a donut. Um, so I want to show this again, just to, to get the clear depiction of what the Hardesty and Hanover depicted, and then what, what actually happened there, how, whoops, how this wall pushed, everything pushed out and down. Um, I talked about these columns on the bottom. So basically when they did this LTM mat, they had the columns. The idea is the, the mat's broad, it catches the weight, transfers it to the columns. The columns were originally specified to be wider. They, they all, the engineers and the project managers agreed that they could use a thinner column with a different technology. They, it's basically an auger, a hollow auger, like a needle. They drill down 70 feet, let's just say. When they get to the bottom, they back it out, and as they back it out, they're pumping concrete into it. The idea, even though they used a smaller uh, diameter, was that because it had threads, the surface area would be great. So the problem with this, though, is the reinforcing of the concrete wasn't there because they were sort of pumping it in, you know, as opposed to, like, a hole and filling it in and being able to put either rebar or just fiberglass or whatever they put in there to support it. It was pretty much just concrete, I believe. And, you know, at a 70 foot, 70 foot length, this is a key aspect, as that stress and pressure from the rainwater moving around and everything and the weight, it just, it literally snapped. This is literally when they dug up the, um, uh, afterwards they dug up, they, you know, they found the evidence of all these broken pieces. Um, we're going to talk about the fix. So uh, the federal government, 2018, the Highway Transfer, you know, Highway Administration Group. This is a document I found. Look, doesn't this look exactly like what we just talked about in Belmar? The sliding surface on a slope. In their depiction, they are showing 
drilled shafts, rigid drilled shafts. So what that means is when they drill them, they're filling them up with like a reinforced concrete, whether, I don't know if it's steel or just, you know, the fiberglass particles, but it's rigid and it carries it from the top of the berm all the way down. Now in Belmar, there's an extra wall here and an extra roadway, and you could argue that you could, you could extend that further. This did not exist in the Belmar. This was all sand going through, um, as you can see. Sand, so in, in the federal government's uh, scenario, they actually have columns, rigid columns coming through here. Uh, getting back, so they're getting ready to actually do some work here. And what they've done now is, this is from a couple weeks ago, they're building sort of work surface areas so the trucks have an area. They're going to start ripping this guy out. Um, removal of Wall 22. I don't know if they take the, I, I think they're going to take the whole thing out because they're going to rebuild the actual whole wall. And I don't know how far down below grade. Can they just leave those concrete broken pieces underneath 70 feet and just work around them with the new, the new columns? Um, the new wall will be cast in place. Now, no one has said that the, the panels, individual panels, are part of the structure. You know, they actually, if, they, if you could say they failed, they only failed because the foundation below them failed. Um, but that being said, they want to make this rigid. It's going to be a rigid wall. They're going to use steel H pile and they're going to do drill, drilled shaft foundations. Now, I don't know to the extent that this is all going to be connected together. I believe it's going to be. So you have like a solid poured concrete wall holding things up. It's not even going to be as tall as it was before. I think they're going to do a bigger berm. And then they're going to connect that with steel H pile and these drilled shaft foundations to hold this whole thing together. A quick recap to close the report. Sand in the middle, no columns holding the top structure and connecting it to the lower level, you know, bedrock. Um, underground concrete columns that were there below the project level um, were this like, like not reinforced concrete and they could not withstand the stress. High groundwater conditions existed. They need to do a better plan and they will. I didn't mention that of like moving the water out of there and then also just the rain, proper drainage of the rain to get it out of there. So I want to show you one thing guys on my website because I have a lot more content if you're really into this. All right, over at 42freeway.com, if you go to towns and roads, it's all my roads projects. It's probably 50. It's all South Jersey, the big project. More of them are about the direct connection project and then the missing moves project. Some of them, like I recently did, there are 12 different movements through that whole direct connection area. Each one has a different design, a different path. And I went through every single one of them in writing and in a video. Thanks for following. YouTube, um, 42 Freeway, you can subscribe, like, hit the bell. Facebook, 42 Freeway. Now, I, I talk all about South Jersey. It's not just roads. So if you're sitting out there in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you're probably not going to find a lot of interest in this. But anyway, thanks, guys, for supporting. 42 Freeway fans in South Jersey, thank you so much for making us awesome. Thanks.